Hi and welcome, I'm Gavin Lon. In this video, we are going to create a basic movie review Blazor application on .NET 8 using the Blazor Web App Project Template. The Blazor Web App Project Template allows us to explore the new features that have already been released in the preview release of .NET 8, namely server-side rendering and streaming rendering. I've now released two videos focusing on new features due to be released in .NET 8. I've added the last two videos that focus on .NET 8, including this one to a .NET 8 playlist so you can watch them in sequence. You don't necessarily need to view the last two videos on .NET 8 before watching this video, but doing so may prove to be beneficial. A link to the .NET 8 playlist has been included in the description of this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. So I very recently joined Twitter. My username is at GavinLonDigital, so please feel free to follow me on Twitter. So in order to follow along with the creation of this Blazor application, please download and install the latest preview release of .NET 8, which is currently Preview 6. You can download and install this release from this location. In order to access the Blazor Web App Project template so that you can explore the new features due to be released in .NET 8, you'll need to install the latest preview release of Visual Studio 2022, which is currently version 17.7.0 Preview 3. You can download and install this preview release from this location. So this application is deliberately simplified so that it is accessible to a broad range of learners with varying levels of skill. We can add more sophisticated functionality to this application in the future. In this video, we'll create a model that serves as a template for a movie object. This class will contain properties to represent the movie's basic details, as well as a property so that a movie review can be added to movie objects, i.e. objects derived from this movie class. We'll create server-side functionality that adds a number of movie objects to a collection that is made available to the calling client code. Remember, our Razor component in this application are server-side rendered. So even the calling client code that I've just referred to executes on the server side and not like in a Blazor WebAssembly application where calling client code can execute within the user's browser. The calling client code in the index component, which in effect is rendered as our application's home page, will retrieve this collection of movie objects, the relevant HTML to display the basic information for each movie, which includes a movie poster image, is rendered on the server in appropriate HTML code. The HTML is then passed down to the user's browser where the movie information is neatly displayed on the home page in the user's browser in a grid. We'll use Bootstrap for layout and styling purposes. So we'll use the Bootstrap grid system for layout purposes. This of course takes care of screen size response design concerns. A user can click on one of the Bootstrap cards that represents a movie and a movie review component is rendered on the server into HTML and passed to the user's browser. So that is our application that we are going to create in this video. It's rather simplistic, but a great way to implement a Blazor application on .NET 8, where we can explore the new features included in .NET 8, namely server-side rendering and streaming rendering. As discussed in my previous two videos on .NET 8, streaming rendering can increase the performance of Blazor applications and ultimately enhance a user's UX, user experience. So let's build the application. Let's launch Visual Studio 2022 Preview. Let's select the Blazor Web App Project Template. Let's name our project Basic Blazor Movie App. You can see here, there's only one item in the framework dropdown list, .NET 8 Preview. This is because we are using the Blazor Web App Project Template for the creation of our Blazor application. This project template is only currently compatible with .NET 8 Preview and is not compatible with previous versions of .NET. So let's press the Create button to create our project. Within the Models folder here, let's add a c -sharp class and let's name our class Movie Model.
Let's add an ID property, which is defined as integer. Let's add a title property, which is defined as string. Let's add a description property, which is defined as string. Let's add an image URL property, which is defined as string. This property will be used to reference an image poster for the relevant movie. You are able to download the relevant movie poster images from this URL on GitHub. Let's create a string property named review. Let's create a folder named services. We are going to create a service class that will be added to the ASP.NET dependency injection system. This will mean that our service class will be instantiated into an object automatically and injected into whichever Razor component we choose. We'll implement the code to implement this dependency injection functionality when we create our Razor components. Let's create a c -sharp interface for our service class. So let's add an interface to our services folder. Let's name our interface iMovie Review Service. Within our interface, let's create a method signature for a method named getMovies. This method returns a list of movie model objects. Let's create a method signature for a method named getMovieByID. This method contains one parameter for the integer data type, which denotes the ID for a specific movie. This method returns the movie model object pertaining to the ID passed in as an argument to this method. Let's create a C-sharp class named MovieReviewService. Let's create default code stubs for the iMovie Review service interface like this. Before we write code for these methods, let's create a static list to store a collection of movie model objects. We are going to keep the code for this really simple so that we can focus on the Blazor side of this application. So we'll avoid using a database management system as our data storage facility. We'll simply use a static list in this example for our data store. We can look at using a database management system for this application in a later tutorial. So let's add some sample data to our static list of movies. So now is a good time to download the movie poster images if you haven't yet done so from this location on GitHub. Let's create an images directory in our project within the www root directory. Let's create a folder named movies within the images directory. We can now set the image URL properties for our movie model objects appropriately so that we can display the relevant movie poster images appropriately on the UI. For our description and review fields, let's simply add lorem ipsum text so that we can expedite the development of our project. So one way to get lorem ipsum text is to appropriately use this website.
Great. If you don't want to follow me here as I tap out the code, please feel free to copy the relevant code on GitHub from this location. Great. So let's create the functionality for our getMovies method. This method simply returns the list of movie model objects. Let's implement the functionality for the getMovieById method. Here we can use link to retrieve a specific movie model object based on the movieId value passed into this method. The single or default link extension method may return null, so let's make the return value here nullable by appropriately adding the question mark symbol. We must first appropriately modify the getMovieById method signature within the iMovieReview service interface. Then we can appropriately modify the getMovieById method signature within the MovieReview service class like this. Great! So now we are ready to develop our front-end code. Let's open the index.razor file. This component will in effect be our home page. So let's write an if statement that checks to see if a variable named movies is null. If the movies variable is null, we want a loading indicator outputted to the UI. So within the add code section, let's define the movies variable which is a list of movie model objects. So the movies variable is of the list data type and is strongly typed as the user defined type movie model. So generics is used here to strongly type our list. In order for the index razor component to see as it were, the movie model user defined type, we must include the appropriate using directive at the top of this file, like this. Let's override the oninitialized async lifecycle hook so that we can include code within this method that runs when our razor component first loads. We want our code within this method to retrieve the collection of movie model objects by calling the getMovies method on our movie review service object that we are injecting into the razor component, as it were. Let's include the appropriate using directive so that the movie review service type is accessible to this razor component. Let's write the code to appropriately call the getMovies method on the movie review service object and assign the returned movie list to the movies variable. So let's write the code at the top of this file that instructs .NET, as it were, to inject the movie review service object into this component at runtime. We must open the program.cs file and register the movie review service for dependency injection before we run our code. So we want to display four bootstrap cards. Each card represents a movie per row in a grid layout. We use the bootstrap grid system for this. So let's create a for loop that loops through our list of movies. So let's divide the count of the movies in our list by four. Then let's use the skip take functionality to take a maximum of four movies from the list with each iteration, then add the relevant movies to the relevant row in the grid. The skip and take extension methods are available to us through the link technology. The bootstrap classes used here will automatically make our page responsive on various screen sizes.
Let's run the code. And we get an exception thrown because we haven't registered the movie review service type for dependency injection. So let's open the program.cs file and we can register our movie review service type for dependency injection with this line of code. Let's run the code. Great! So by default, when we use the Blazor Web App project template, the HTML code is rendered on the server before it is passed down to the client and displayed within the user's browser. This can be more performant than when client-side rendering is used, which involves JavaScript code appropriately updating the DOM. So to enable streaming rendering in our Blazor application, all we need to do is include this declarative piece of code at the top of our file. So let's include the stream rendering attribute at the top of the index.razor file like this. On our local machine, this is really quick and our data is cached in memory, so there is no real delay when retrieving the movie data. If we introduce a delay here, artificially, to simulate the data retrieval process, taking a relatively long time, a blank screen would be presented to the user while the user waits for this relatively long process to complete. This results in the user having a poor user experience with the application. So, to create a better user experience, we can use this new feature included in .NET 8, namely streaming rendering. This essentially allows content that can be displayed almost immediately to the screen once a user accesses the relevant web page to be displayed almost instantaneously in the user's browser. The content that is hindered by a long running operation, for example, an operation that entails the movie data being retrieved from a remote database, can then load asynchronously in the background. This means the user is not forced to stare at a blank screen while, for example, the movie data is being retrieved. A loading indicator can be displayed to the user with the part of the web page that does not need to be retrieved from a database, for example, static content. Once the related content, as it were, becomes available, this content can then be presented to the user's browser. So the content that takes a long time to render can be asynchronously streamed to the user's browser when it becomes available. So the combination of server-side rendering and streaming rendering allows for content to appear in the browser asynchronously, which is what you'd expect from a SPA application. So with .NET 8, Blazor still retains its SPA performance, as it were, while also adding the benefit of server-side rendering. So no signal R connection needs to be made in order for the data related content, in this case movie content, to be loaded asynchronously. This is achieved using this great new .NET feature for Blazor, namely streaming rendering. Note that you can also use signal R, which would be used by default in a Blazor server application. If you wish to use signal R, you can, for example, do this by including the render mode server attribute at the top of the relevant file like this. So we get an exception here because we need to tell the framework, as it were, that we wish to include signal R functionality within our application. We can do this by chaining the add server components method to the add razor components method here within the program.cs file. Let's run the code.
And you can see now that our web socket connection is established here. And signal R can now be used to pass relevant data from the server to the client. Signal R can of course also be used for user interaction functionality. So you get quick updates to the web page in response to user actions. So we have an opportunity here to create cleaner code. Let's abstract the code for displaying the movie data to the UI into its own Razor component. So this component can be included as a child component within the parent index component and can potentially be reused from within other parent components. So to create our child component that will handle the output for individual movie data, let's create a Razor component named movie item. So we need the movie model type to be easily accessible from within our movie item component. So we could include an appropriate using directive here to make the movie model class easily accessible from within this component. At this stage, it is better, however, to include the relevant using directive within the underscore imports.razor file. This will mean that the movie item class will be easily accessible from any components included within the pages directory within our project, which in effect means we don't need to repeatedly include the relevant using directive within the relevant Razor components. So we can now remove this using directive from the index.razor component. And let's include an appropriate using directive for our service class within the underscore imports.razor file. Let's copy the relevant movie related code from the index component and appropriately paste it into the movie item child component. Note that our child component does not include an at page directive at the top that denotes a root because the child component is only accessible via a parent component. The parent component will have an at page directive that denotes an appropriate root so that the user can, for example, access the relevant parent component by clicking an appropriate menu item. So we need to include a parameter here so that we can pass the relevant movie model object to our child component from the parent component. Let's write the code within the index parent component to appropriately call the movie item child component. Great. Let's add a style to the A tag that wraps our movie bootstrap cards so that the underline does not appear under the text with the relevant movie cards. Great. So the last component we need to create in order to complete this application is the movie review component. This component is responsible for displaying a selected movie's movie review to the user. So let's create a Razor component named movie review. Let's create an appropriate at page directive that denotes the root to this parent component. The difference in this root compared to the root defined in the index razor component is that a parameter is defined here. The parameter value that will be passed into this page is an integer value which denotes the relevant movie ID. As you can see we are including a constraint here so that the value passed in is of type integer. Let's write code so that streaming rendering is leveraged here. 
let's write code so that an instance of the movie review service object is injected into this component at runtime. Within the at code section, let's define a parameter of the integer data type to store the movie ID parameter value that will be passed into this component when a user selects a movie from the home page by clicking on it. Let's define a private variable of the movie model user defined type. Let's write code to override the uninitialized async lifecycle hook so that we can implement code that executes when our component is first loaded. This code will return a specific movie model object from the relevant list of movies. And let's write code to assign the returned value to the private movie item variable. So we are using the movie review service objects get movie by ID method to return the selected movie from the movie list. We can introduce a delay so that we can see streaming rendering in action. Let's write code to display the image of the relevant movie and the relevant movie's review adjacent to the image. We'll use the Bootstrap grid system for layout purposes and of course, one of the great features of Bootstrap is that it automatically takes care of responsive design concerns for us. Let's run the code. Okay, so for some reason the int constraint here is not working, i.e. the framework is not automatically converting the passed in ID parameter into an integer, so it is seeing this value as a string data type. So we can introduce this cheap and nasty fix to get around this issue. It's certainly not optimal in terms of code cleanliness, if you like, but will work for our purposes here. So we can handle the appropriate casting functionality ourselves here. To do this, we can simply remove the int constraint for the root here and make the relevant parameter variable a string parameter rather than an integer. Then let's write code to convert the id string variable to an int so that we can pass the relevant integer value to the get movie by id method. And that now works, excellent. I hope you enjoyed following along with the development of a basic Blazor application written using the Blazor web app project template that runs on .NET 8. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. 
So I've recently joined Twitter. My username is at GavinLonDigital. So please feel free to follow me on Twitter. Thank you and take care.